Ah, there's that old Centron theme music. Like an old friend. Back in baby's arms. Here it is at last. The night of the party that everyone's been looking forward to for weeks. What could go wrong? That's Betty Brand at the piano. Howdy. She's the kind of girl who puts life in a party. She brought trail mix. And here are Jimmy and Sue and Gene and the rest of the gang. They seem to be having a wonderful time. Ostensibly. Over here are the ones who'd rather talk than play. And oh yes, here is Adrilene. The robot housekeeper. Adrilene, who usually sits all alone, slumped in her chair in the corner. Adrilene knows that for some reason she doesn't fit into the picture, but she doesn't know why. Why don't these stupid turds like me? Her party dress is just as pretty, just as becoming as the clothing the others are wearing. She remembered to conform ahead of time. And Adrilene has a sense of humor. She can laugh right along with the others when she knows what it is they're laughing about. She just doesn't get Doonesbury. But why do they sometimes laugh for no good reason? Maybe they're just nice. I don't know. What is it that creates this unfavorable impression the others have of her? There's a mirror, Adrilene. Go on, look at yourself. See if you can discover what it is. Your face is all right, Adrilene. You're neat and clean and healthy looking. A little spooky, maybe. You're neither too fat nor too thin. Why, there's nothing wrong with the way you look. But we'll keep checking you against this standard every five minutes for the rest of your life. What in the world? The oh. mirror's gone crazy. Boy. You hold one hand up, it holds the other one down. <laughs> Who ever heard of a mirror like this? <laughs> Every sitcom ever. This is not in the script, folks. Someone get a grown-up. Now look here, you. You're supposed to do what I do. You're supposed to show me how I look. No. Oh. You listen to me for a change. For years, I've never had a motion of my own. I've just done exactly what you do when you're in front of me. But I'm tired of helping you pretend. I can't show you how you really look. I'm freaking out, man. Because when you're around me, you put on an act. You smile your best smile, and you stand up straight. I've always had to show you how you thought you look. How's that do now? Do you want to see how you really look, Adrienne? This is it. Your head pokes forward, your shoulders slump, your stomach will take a look. I'm starting to see why the other kids keep their yes, distance. Yes, Adrienne, the mirror may have gone crazy, but for the first time, it's telling you the truth. You're the worst. Like a lot of boys and girls, your posture is your problem. What are you going to do about it? Um, stop. I'll tell you what I'm going to do about it. I'm going to make you reflect what I want to see, because I'm going to have good posture. You just wait and see. Hm. Yes, spite and self-loathing are the pathway to proper posture. Atta girl, Adrienne. I'll just stay here in purgatory or whatever. Yes, Adrienne, you have just taken the most important step toward good posture. Wanting to have it. Isn't that like step zero? But determination isn't always enough. What is good posture? How can you make it a habit? Maybe you'd better ask someone for help. Your friend Tom? Ooh. No. His posture is not much better than yours. Kid's a dumpster fire. The best person to ask might be Mr. Riley, your science teacher. He's never busy. He's been teaching you some other things about health. Maybe he can give you some pointers about posture. And perhaps penmanship and politeness and patriotism. When you and Tom tell Mr. Riley about your problem, he agrees that posture is important to all young people. So important that he will ask Dr. Martin to come to class to talk with you about it. Oh, great job, narcs. Dr. Martin is not concerned with how poor posture makes you look to other people. Pish. He talks about what good posture means to your health. He's not in this to make friends. In the first place, poor posture may be a sign of something wrong with you. You may be run down physically, or overtired, or upset. Or ethnic, or creative, or happy to be alive. By your family doctor to discover the cause of your posture defects. And they are defects, children, make no mistake. Even if your poor posture is only a matter of careless habits, you should see a doctor before you start corrective measures. We don't want to overstate this, but posture is a matter of life and death. 
You see, our skeletons and muscles are designed to support our vital organs so that they can do their best work. It's easier to stand tall without all that skin in the way. These organs are pushed out of their proper positions. The muscles are stretched, too, under a strain which they were not designed to take. Smooth move, God. Stressed muscles and displaced organs tire more quickly and work less efficiently. The health of the whole body is affected. Slouching puts your whole family in danger. And here's where habit comes in. If you usually slump when you're sitting or walking, as this boy does, your body will accustom itself to poor posture so that it actually becomes difficult for you to sit up tall or walk correctly. Yes, I'm afraid it's too late for this guy. To develop good posture habits, the kind this girl has, there are several things you must do. Clear your schedule. First, exercise. Go in for active, stretching, bending games, which will build good, hard muscles to help hold your body in line. Jump in the line. Rock your body in time. Work will do it, too. Any activity which takes balancing or stretching is good for developing the muscles of your shoulders and chest. Chores and posture? I'm in heaven. Spend some time every day working or playing vigorously. To have good posture, get enough exercise. Oh, yeah, square dancing was like CrossFit back then. But wait a minute. If you work or play too hard for too long a time, you'll become overtired. It's easy to slump when your muscles are tired. You know what, you guys? I don't know why I thought I could help you. So get enough rest, too. Take time out to relax when you get home from school or any time you feel tired. If you rest for a while before dinner, you'll feel more like sitting up straight at the table. Alone in the fourth dimension. Go to bed early enough to get plenty of sleep. And sleep on a firm mattress which will support your weight without sagging. Remember, to have good posture, you must have enough rest. But let me guess, I don't want to over-rest. Good night, Spine. Your shoes are important to your posture, too. Choose new shoes for comfort and good workmanship. Shoes for industry, shoes for the dead. Turn your, shoes your shoes should be long enough and wide enough to allow your feet action room and sturdily made to give your foot complete protection and support. They should be shaped like a foot, probably. Wear the proper shoes. The foundation of good posture is in your feet. Make it a strong foundation. I just don't want to move on before I've stressed the shoe thing one more time. Yes, Adrienne, Dr. Martin has given you and your classmates a new idea of the importance of good posture. You know now how important it is to your health. Now we can sell you products. He has pointed out three important ways a healthy person can develop what it takes for good posture. Aw, you made a pretty sign. Boys and girls must eat foods which help keep them well. Only a healthy body can respond to the training which makes good posture a habit. Enlist today. Uh, I mean, posture. Most of you posture. have good health. You're all set to train your body in good posture habits. Great, but thanks. what is good posture? Wh what have you been yammering about this whole time? Is it the ramrod stiffness of a parade marcher? Please don't say ramrod or stiffness. No. Good standing posture is a comfortable, easy position such that a straight line could be drawn from your ear through your shoulder, the center of your hip, and your ankle. So, like a parade marcher. When you stand and walk with your body in a straight line, you don't have to throw out your chest, and your stomach flattens out naturally. In just six weeks, or your money back. Good sitting posture means sitting with your head directly above your hips, with your hips and back against the chair. Your feet should be flat on the floor. The hiney should be tucked away under the abdomen. That's all there is to it, Adrienne. It seems easy, doesn't it? But it's not as easy as it looks. Mm -hmm. You can't expect to correct posture defects overnight. Without spending a ton of cash. You'll have to find out from your doctor which exercises will help you the most, and then practice those exercises regularly. Da, 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 da. Your teachers and your parents will give you encouragement, but the standing tall and walking tall are up to you. Hey, those are both movies. You and Tom already have the will for good posture. Now you know the ways. Huh? 
If both of you practice good posture until it's second nature... You can roll the world! Well, <laughs> Tom is going to have a set of habits that can make him look better and feel better all of his life. You gotta start somewhere. But you, Adrienne... Forget you about can it. not only do good things for your health, but before too long you can walk right up to that crazy mirror in your room... And walk right through. And this time the mirror will be surprised. You will have the last laugh. That's what this is and all about. what is about. more important, you'll know that you can be proud of your posture. Next time, we'll talk about your split personality disorder. Bye, kids. Oh, and by the way, stand up straight. Did we mention that? <laughs> Shoes. <laughs> <laughs>